We're good to go? Excellent. Good morning, everybody. We're getting towards the end of a very long week. I don't know about you all, but I'm looking forward to sleeping all weekend. Um, OK, uh, informal survey before I get started. How many people here are intimately aware of open daylight? OK, uh, intimately aware of the OVS ML2 driver in Neutron? Um, and how many people are very familiar with OpenFlow 1.0, 1.3? OK, and how many people here uh, read the talk description and said, this is a presentation for people who are not familiar with networking? <laughs> OK, uh, so just to level set, uh, this is, the idea here is to give an overview of how things are um, today with uh, the OVS ML2, presentation, uh, ML2 um, mechanism. Uh, give an overview of how they're different when you use open daylight with, uh, just to, to be precise, with the OVSDB uh, network southbound interface of open daylight and, um, and why you would even want to use open daylight. So since many of you seem to be familiar with open daylight already, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go pretty briefly here. But what, it, what is open daylight? It's an SDN controller um, in the context of... Uh, OpenStack, it provides network virtualization. It provides the ability to define a network topology for your virtual infrastructure, which is independent of the physical uh, fabric, the, the underlay uh, network. It is also a, a platform for network engineering. So um, one of the key audiences of uh, and user bases and, and developer uh, constituencies of the Open Daylight project is people who are um, doing kind of advanced research um, on uh, the network. Right? It gives you access to some very detailed and, and, and low-level information about what's going on on the network and allows you to act on uh, traffic that's going across the network. So um, opendaylight.org, I invite you all, if, you're, if you aren't familiar with the project, to go and, and, and read more there. Um, so that first one, what's an SDN controller? Um, the idea is that you centrally define the way traffic flows across your network. And that policy, that central definition of the way the traffic flows is pushed to the edge and enforced on the edge by physical or virtual uh, network devices, virtual switches, physical switches, physical routers. Um, Open Daylight has a specificity that it manages multiple uh, southbound um, interfaces. So it can talk to open flow devices. It can talk to open V switches via OpenFlow and OVSDB. Uh, it can handle NetConf. And it, all, it can also handle, um, there, there are multiple mechanisms for, for integrating uh, other network management protocols, uh, device types, vendor plugins, um, and even handing off to other SDN controllers for part of your, your management. Uh, so one of the projects, for example, in the Helium release is, uh, is uh, uh, plug in for open contrail. Uh, there is VTN, which hands off to, to, uh, to uh, alternative network, network management uh, pieces of infrastructure. So it manages multiple pieces on the southbound, and it can, it can handle multiple protocols, L2, L3, um, and so on. Uh, so why would you use one? Well, a few sample applications. And I don't want to go very into detail, but uh, the one I've mentioned already, network virtualization, is the one that's probably of the most interest to open, open stack users. Uh, but it also gives you the ability to interact with, with how your network uh, interfaces with the WAN. Right? So perhaps uh, optimizing WAN traffic to ensure that a certain type of traffic gets a, gets a higher quality of service than, than let's say, uh, Skype or BitTorrent. Um, traffic engineering, identifying hotspots and routing around them on your, on your network. This is a. Um, Getting quality of service information in real time from your network uh, is it, it, the, these kinds of applications are the things that are enabled by by an SDN controller, and uh, also software-based network applications. The ability to do things like intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, uh, DDoS protection, um, handling VPN as a service—all of these things are possible in an SDN controller because you're, you've got direct access to your network traffic. 
Open Daylight has a lot of projects. This is the Open Daylight Helium uh, release. Uh, the Lithium release, which is in final preparations now and is due for a release in about a month, um, has many more projects. Some of these projects have, in some sense, fallen by the wayside. But you can see there's a rough um, breakdown here of we have multiple northbound interfaces, multiple ways to interact with Open Daylight. We have multiple southbound interfaces that can handle multiple device types on the south. Um, and then, then in the middle, we have a controller uh, which understands the state of the network and has multiple network applications that can act on it. In the context of uh, OVS DB managing um, Open vSwitch, uh, of the OVS DB project in Open Daylight, to be precise, um, these are the, the pieces that matter. So we've got an OpenStack Neutron northbound interface. Uh, we deal with Open Daylight via a northbound REST API. Um, we have the ability to integrate AAA to make sure that authentication and, and authorization are, are, are consistent across Open Daylight and OpenStack. Uh, we have an OpenStack service which replicates what Neutron can do. Um, OVS DB, the Neutron service which defines the network, network piece uh, that talks to the OVS DB plugin southbound and the OpenFlow 1.3 plugin southbound. We'll get into all of the details of that a little bit later. The, the point here is there are, in the context of OpenStack, uh, about half a dozen projects that are of particular importance. And the rest provide you the ability, by, by working with Open Daylight directly, um, uh, to do more advanced features. But, uh, but these are the projects that Neutron will deal with in the context of, of network virtualization alone. OK, so some of the core Open Daylight use cases. Open Daylight traditionally has uh, had a big tent approach. Um, but uh, the Open Daylight Board has recently said we want to focus on two specific uh, zones as, as a, a areas of focus. And one of them is OpenStack network, virtu network virtualization. Um, and there are multiple aspects to that. And the other one is service function chaining and the NFV use case, which you may have heard quite a bit about this week. NFV is a very hot topic. It's network function virtualization. It's the, the ability to migrate physical workloads to virtual machines. Um, in the context of telco applications, um, core, uh, core packets, uh, IMS, voice data, um, all of the things we, we're used to in telco services, they're currently physical machines that are moving to VMs. And all of those things need very specific network constraints. They have very specific network constraints. Um, so something like open daylight is required to, um, to enforce those constraints and, and to, to, to provide the, the, the ability for, a, for an application developer to, to define how that application is going to live on the network. So these are the, these are the core use cases that Open Daylight is fo focusing on. Uh, things like SFC is service function chaining, the ability to chain multiple virtual machines together uh, as network services on the way to. So when you get, for example, uh, just to take one example, uh, traffic comes into your network. You do some deep packet inspection on it, and you detect that it's a video flow. And you say, OK, let's go through the video uh, bandwidth limiter, because we don't want to use all of our bandwidth on video. And let's go through the parental control, because we don't want kiddies watching porn, for example. And that would be a service chain, which would have um, three nodes in it. And then finally, it gets to the, the endpoint. OK, so open daylight and open stack. Uh, so to start with, I promised a brief overview of how OpenStack wor uh, works with just the Open vSwitch ML2 plugin. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail here, but essentially the ML2 mechanism replaced the Neutron plugin architecture, which was there before. The idea is that you've got the modular layer two um, plugin hands off, uh, defines you, you, you have essentially two things that the, the tunnel type between hosts, which can be VLAN, VXLAN, or GRE. The mechanism manager, and there are multiple mechanisms. Open Daylight is one of them. Um, this is a, a way for Neutron to delegate certain, certain operations to, to third parties. Um, the way Neutron does it with the OVS plugin is that you have Neutron server receives an API call. Uh, it records. It actually sends out first the message to, to the queue. You've got one L2 agent, the Open vSwitch agent, 
on each compute node, which is managing the flow table on your Open vSwitch uh, instance on, on, the, on the compute node. We have an L3 agent per router that's created. Uh, so uh, the L3 agent, we'll get to what it does a little bit later. And we've got a DHCP agent per uh, subnet, which has DHCP associated with it. Um, Neutron passes on the request via the agents, uh, gets a, OK, this is done, and records the change of state of the network in the Neutron database. Um, this is also this is a bottleneck here. Uh, blah potential bottleneck around the message, message queue, the scaling issue of L2 agents coordinating across multiple, multiple hosts. Anyway, um, so this is how traffic flows with OpenStack. So there are two things. There are how, do, how do we define the flow tables across the hosts, and then how does the actual traffic flow when we've defined them? Uh, so this is a, a pretty simple setup. We've got a compute node over here, here on, the, on the left, which has two VMs on it. And we've got the control node, uh, neutron control node here on the right, which has a DHCP agent and an L3 agent running on it, the purple, purple boxes here. OK, so this is all from, from Lars, Lars colleague, uh, Kellogg Stedman, a colleague of mine in Red Hat, um, who has described everything here in very deep data, detail. And it's an awesome page. It's networking in too much detail. If you look for it, it's, uh, it's really good. This was, this was huge education for me. Um, so if we look at the first level, what happens from the instance? Well, we've got uh, ETH0 on your, on your, Ether on your uh, Nova instance um, is connected to a tap device in the host namespace. That tap device is linked to um, a Linux bridge. That's where uh, security rules, when you define your security rules associated with an instance, there is one of these per instance living on a compute node. And that's where there's a, there's a set of IP tables that, um, that say uh, what's allowed for that instance, right? So we define a chain. There's, a, there's the multiple chains that get defined, defined one for the, so you see the same hex string, 7C7AE61E0. Um, and then there are two tables that are defined, one for output, one for input, O and I. And they define just, it's normal IP tables, that's, but it is, that, is, that is defined on that bridge. And, uh, some would say that's a bug, that really you should be able to do that in the open vSwitch bridge. I'm not going to get into that debate today. Uh, then we bridge from that Linux bridge down to uh, an integration bridge, vrint. And that's essentially where traffic from instances are tagged with VLAN. So the tenant um, that you're associated with or the, the subnet that you're on, um, to the, the, the network isolation, is at the, the isolation of, of traffic from that VM is, is, is defined there. Uh, so just showing the vSwitch, OVS, VS control show, um, you see the port, the QVO. So, so this is, you, you'll see the same hex string appearing throughout the chain, right? The 7C7, AE61E. I think that's got some significance to Neutron, but uh, I don't know what it is. Um, if you ask questions afterwards, I may defer to some people in the audience who know this stuff a lot better than I do. Uh, and we tag. So there's a tag one. So you're tagging all of the traffic coming in, in here with VLAN ID one. Then you get hand, handed off to a tunnel, BR tunnel. Uh, and that's where we do the tunneling between all of the hosts. So GRE, VXLAN, VLAN, whatever you define in your, in your ML2, um, not mechanism, the other one, type, tunnel type. Um, and then it's sent to the physical NIC on the, com on the compute node and tunneled to the peer, whichever is the peer that you're, you're, you're peering to. Um, so it's converted to from G, so, and then it gets to the other tunnel, and it's converted back from GRE back to VLAN, and we'll see, we'll see how that happens. And then traffic sent with the appropriate, is sent with the appropriate VLAN tag back up to BR range, right? So this is um, a flow table, and uh, what you can see here in red is if traffic arriving has a tunnel ID of two, and its destination is broadcast. So if, if you're sending broadcast or multicast traffic from GRE tunnel two, it's going to, you're going to set uh, mod VLAN VID. So we're going to set the VLAN VID to one, and we're going to output that to port one. Um, so obviously, somebody knows what the port one corresponds to, uh, where this should be going. 
Uh, if you look further down, if it's a tunnel ID 0 0.2 and it's going to a specific MAC address, uh, then we modify the VLAN ID and send it back up to the, back up to the BRint. And if it's coming in from port, port 1 and the VLAN is 1, then we set the GRE tunnel to 2 and we send it off to the Ethernet card. Uh, so that's, uh, we get to, to BR ton on the, on, the, on the neutron host, passes up to BR int on the neutron host, and we get that GRE to VLAN conversion in BR ton, and the BR int bridges to the neutron agents, right? the DHCP agent, the L3 agent. So if we look at the BR int, we see two tap, tap devices here, tap F14, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's got a VLAN tag one, which is the same as on the other side. Uh, and tap C2D7DD, VLAN tag one. So these are all associated with the same instance that we saw on the compute node. Each network with DHCP has a, a well, network actually subnet with DHCP has its own network namespace, and each router has its own namespace. So if we do an IP net NS, we see a QDHCP namespace, and we do see a Q router namespace. And that's how we can, al we can allow multiple DHCP domains to, with, with overlapping. Uh, IP addresses to be to exist on the same OpenStack cluster, um, and if we dig into the namespaces, for example, on this QDHCP, uh, we see F14C that corresponds to remember the, the one of the ports that we saw on the bridge. Um, and this is essentially just a DNS mask process, right? Uh, which is uh, doing DHCP. And you can do a PS minus EF on the, on the, net, on, on the neutron host, and you'll see the, DS, the, uh, the DNS mask process. You can grep for this F14 C59, uh, C59 8D, and you will see the process that corresponds to just that uh, VLAN. Uh, on the routing side, we get to the router, which is essentially um, a set of routing tables, IP tables. Uh, and the traffic is sent on to uh, BRX. Uh, so this is where we do um, uh, the natting that happens uh, happens on BRX. So if you've got floating IP, it's IPs, I think they're it's handled there. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm right. Good. Uh, so the routing tables for the router are defined just with normal IP tables on on uh, on the uh, control host and in that uh, namespace. So we've got two connections, QG, which is the gateway associated with the router, and QR, which is the router interface back to BR int. Um, and if we look at the OVSVS control, we see again interface C2D, top C2D7, that corresponds to the C2D7, the router, QR. So we've, comp we've matched up the router with the, with the port it's on. OK, so that's how it works with ML2. Um, I don't know if anybody here learned anything there. I hope so. Uh, how does it work if you swap out ML2 and you put in open daylight in this place? Well, um, first things first, how do the flows, how, how does Neutron talk to open daylight? Well, we've got uh, uh, a single uh, endpoint. So there's a common service uh, northbound uh, endpoint, which is um, uh, configured as the, the uh, the API connection point when you do the, the mechanism. We'll see how that works a little bit later. Um, that talks to the Neutron service. So there's Neutron ML2 talks to the open daylight through, through the REST API. Uh, that talks to Neutron service. It says, okay, I've got multiple, I've, I need to handle this type of request. Um, I'm talking to v, open vSwitch. Um, can anybody do op handle open vSwitch stuff? Can anybody do open open vSwitch. So we've got uh, a request goes down to uh, the OpenFlow plugin, which actually codes the flows. And we've got an OVSDB provider, which is listening southbound for events from uh, the open vSwitches via OVSDB server uh, on the compute nodes. It simplifies things because you've got a single central control point, And you've got the ability to scale that out in all the ways that you can scale out open, day open daylight, yes. Um, so how do you do it? First, install open, uh, open stack. I would love to tell you something differently, but if you've already got open stack and you've got a bunch of networks and subnets and, uh, and network configuration in place, there is not currently an easy way to migrate when you're migrating from the OVS 
uh, ML2 plugin to Open Daylight, so you need to sort of clean out your Neutron config and replay it once you've got, uh, uh, got Open Daylight in place. Install your Open Daylight. You can do it either on your Neutron control host if you want to have them both on the same host, or you can do it on a separate host. It's just uh, an API endpoint. You can load, pa load balance that, that API endpoint if you're doing a cluster. Um, you clean your OVS uh, DB configuration on all of the hosts, and you uh, do a, an um, open vSwitch set manager um, command on each of the compute host to say, OK, this open vSwitch is being managed by um, this host, this controller. And then in the open stack side, and we'll see the, we'll see the config, you, you set open daylight as, as, a, as the ML2 provider. And then all of the neutron commands are going to open daylight, and all of the open vSwitches are already attached to your open daylight instance, and everything should just work. I see, I see Flavio nodding his head, so I don't think I've said anything too wrong. OK, step one, neutron config. Unfortunately, no migration path, uh, so you need to delete all your subnets, networks, routers, ports, stop the neutron service, stop and disable all of the L2 agents on, um, on all of your compute nodes. But I think I, I mentioned that later. So. Installing Open Daylight, there are a number of things that are required. Um, anybody who is uh, intimately familiar with Open Daylight will say, well, shouldn't this all be picked up by dependencies when I install just the ODL, OVSDB, um, OpenStack feature? And yes, it should. Uh, with Helium, it doesn't quite work that way, so you need to install a number of things. I, 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 so the base is basic services. NSF is a kind of a catch-all basket for features, which includes, among other things, some of the uh, the neutron northbound stuff. Um, in Helium, and this will change in Lithium, uh, ODL uses ADSAL, which is application-driven service abstraction layer. Um, it's moving to MDSAL, model-driven uh, service abstraction layer, which is essentially you define a Yang model for the service, and then that generates the north and southbound interfaces that it needs. Um, the OVSDB OpenStack, OVSDB northbound, um, why do we need OVSDB northbound? Uh, for the, yes, the OVSDB server is talking to uh, the OVSDB plugin. Uh, OVSDB is kind of namespace overloaded here, because um, OVSDB is actually the database that manages the open vSwitch configuration on the compute nodes, and the, a plugin to open daylight, which manages the network and the southbound interface from uh, OVSDB, the service, the network service to the OVSDB on the switch. So it's got at least three different meanings depending on where you are. And Delux, this is just if you want to have the, have the GUI. Um, Delux is the um, daylight user experience. So it's the, it's the, the web-based UI for, for Helium and Lithium. OK, so after step two, if you, if you go to Slides will be online. You'll be able to get the URL. But it's essentially if you go to your, your, um, your Open Daylight uh, host, uh, port 8181, you will see this. You've got Open Daylight. It doesn't have any devices that it's connected to. Um, this is what it looks like when, when Open Daylight is, is installed correctly. Uh, then for each host, you stop and disable your Neutron Open vSwitch agent. You don't need it anymore. The L2 agent is going away, and you're going to replace it with just the normal OVSDB server. Um, you stop your open, open vSwitch service uh, to clean out your local database. There are good instructions on this in, in the um, Open Daylight Wiki. Uh, you restart your open vSwitch service, and you connect uh, OVS, VS Control, Set Manager, and you connect it to your, uh, this IP address is just whatever your, your, uh, your Open Daylight Control host is. You may need set in force zero, and that's because this port is not open in the default SE Linux policy. It's better if you allow the port traffic, um, but consider this a bug that will be fixed. Uh, so after that, you've got an empty OVS VS control. You've got an empty open vSwitch configuration, which shows that you've got uh, your, your config is being managed by a manager. It's connected. And the bridge, BR int, we don't have any BR ton anymore. BR ton goes away because all of the tunneling is done on the integration bridge. Um, is also being controlled by port 6633 and is also connected. And that's all you should see. 
Uh, if we look at the flows, and I've snipped here, but uh, you've got that this is an empty flow table. Um, OVSTB sets up, it, it uses uh, tables, uh, open, uh, open flow tables. So we've got table zero corresponds, and there are semantics associated with what each of these tables does. Um, so it's just uh, table uh, zero. Uh, you can see, yeah, so the, there's one thing there is that, that the controller is connected on table zero. So this is, it allows, or it, 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 there, there will be open flow traffic across that. That's essentially what that means. We'll see so what, the, what each of these tables mean here but later. But uh, the idea is it's kind of a, a flow table where semantically packets are coming in, they're, they're handled with table zero, then they're sent to table 20, sent to table 10 to 30, and so on. Um, that's the way it works. So this is what you should be seeing if your open vSwitches are correctly connected to your, to your controller. Then you connect, you configure Neutron. So there's a, a, an init file. You just say the mechanism you set it to open daylight, your uh, tenant network type, type to VLAN. And this is the API endpoint, so ODL control, whatever the ODL control host is, port 8080, controller NB, V2, Neutron. That's just the API endpoint that's exposed by, by open daylight. Um, and so that's, you're done. We can stop now. Uh, so going back to the uh, networking in too much detail, what does the same thing look like with open daylight? Well, the only thing that's changed materially is that we don't have that BR ton anymore. Um, there's another thing that may change. You may, uh, especially with lithium, uh, no longer have an L3 agent. And you may end up having your BRX on each host and having um, the routing handled directly by open daylight on the BR int. Uh, we'll get to a little bit about that later, but that's not the case with helium, which is what I used as my reference here. Um, so it's essentially the same thing, right? So why would you use it? But um, let's see how the flows look like. Uh, so we've got, if we look at the bridge on, this would be a compute node, uh, we see there's a, a VXLAN that gets created, so it, it's peering the compute node to the control node. If we have multiple compute nodes, it will peer to them too. So you'll see uh, an interface, a VXLAN, which will bridge to each, each node, uh, physical node on your, on your OpenStack instance. And we've got a couple of uh, ports here. Those are going to correspond to your instances. Um, if we look at the, so this is list interfaces. Just to, just to get uh, some ideas of the kinds of information that you need or, or that you have in open, open, open flow. Uh, so let's just let's let's look at list interface and, and external IDs is an important one because this is what allows you to associate a MAC address and an open flow port with a specific UUID, which is the port UUID in Neutron. Uh, so that's what allows uh, OVSDB uh, in open daylight to, to make the connection between the virtual port in Neutron and, and the, the physical port on the vSwitch. Um, and also the interface, so you can see the, the actual tap device there as well. Uh, if we look at the flow tables, so this is uh, the first thing here is if, if traffic is coming in on port three and its destination is this uh, MAC address, which is, for want of a better, 7595 at the end, um, then set the tunnel to zero by three A, so it's setting the VLAN or VXLAN ID. Um, if the traffic is uh, tagged with, that. so later that's, that's table zero. Uh, table zero is where all of the tagging gets done. Uh, table 70, which is um, L2 routing, or L3, it's part of L3, uh, uh, is um, if your destination is the IP address, then uh, set the destination MAC address to 7595. So it's doing essentially a reverse ARP lookup. Um, and the last rule here, table 110, is the actual L2 routing. Um, if your tunnel ID is uh, 0 by 3 EA and your destination MAC address is 7595, then you send it out to port 3, which we saw earlier. So that's how traffic is routed to and from the instance. Um, if we look at, there are some rules in the, in the and I'm, I'm, this is just, I've selected, because if you looked at the float table, it would be, Oh yes, there's, there's a 70 line flow table. Um, 
and, and I can't read it because the text is too small. So I've extracted some of the key lines here to, to, to just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that happen in the flows. Um, so here, uh, if we're sending out broadcast traffic and it's on tunnel ID 0 by 39, um, if it's local, then we send it to uh, output to port 2 and to port 1. So we're going to send it to the instance that's attached and over the VXLAN bridge. And if it's remote, then we just send it over the VXLAN bridge. Is that right? OK. Um, and then finally, this is one of the things that's kind of cool. Um, table 110, the ARP. OK, so if, it's a, if the tunnel ID is, is uh, 0 by 3a, so this is all of the instances in that, in that group of instances, that subnet, uh, and the destination MAC address is either of the instances on the other compute node, then it'll be sent over the tunnel. So this is it, it, it basically it says, OK, if you're going to MAC address, whatever, then I'll send you to the right port. And each of these compute nodes is coded with the correct complete ARP table for your network. Uh, one of the things that's kind of cool is uh, distributed ARP. Uh, so you don't get any ARP traffic, traffic on the backplane because uh, what happens is, because every compute node has a complete ARP table of your network, whenever uh, an ARP request comes in on any port, you can say, well, I know where that guy is. So you just swap some fields around, and you can do all of this with open flow tables. You say, OK, I'm going to swap. I'm going to move field 1 to field 2, move uh, field 3 to field 4, and then I'm going to set this value in field 1 and field 3, and I'm going to just send the packet back on the same port I got it in from, which is kind of cool. It's one of, one of, the, one of the nice things. OK. Uh, so that's where we are with Helium. Uh, coming in Lithium, so this is a, the OVSDB uh, project in Open Daylight have been hard at work migrating from AD cell to MD cell. I mentioned that. That's a big chunk of work. Um, so that's going to enable. Th there are some hist historical reasons why we had both. Um, the general decision of the community is that everything should be MD cell from here on. And so a lot of the AD cell uh, legacy projects are, are migrating to MD cell. Uh, there is a name for feature parity with Neutron. So all of the features that are currently available in Neutron should be uh, available directly and provided by, by Open Daylight, including load balancing as a service. And um, uh, currently, I, so currently the east-west is working and the north-south is not finished. But the idea is to have native DVR. So essentially, every compute node will have uh, the ability to route traffic um, directly, so you've got a native distributed virtual router uh, using just OpenFlow on the compute nodes, uh, with uh, controlled by by, um, by the controller. And the Neutron Northbound interface has been split out from the Open Day Daylight controller. And I'm done. So I, I I hope that was that was educational. I have uh, about seven minutes for questions. Um, do we want to get people behind the mic, or will I just repeat the questions? Maybe it's just easiest if I re repeat the questions. Okay, uh, you and then you. Yep. So the question was. Uh, I know they're, they're, that it's currently not possible to migrate from OVS to ODL uh, without dropping the entire config. Um, are there plans to enable that? Because it, it makes it hard to, to move to ODL if you have to drop everything. Um, I am going to defer to <laughs> Ed. Ed, are there any plans to do that? Uh, to enable, um, so I guess the idea would be uh, to have ODL read your network config and reconfigure the vSwitch using ODL instead, of, and, and so allow people to keep their Neutron config and just reflect that Neutron config in an ODL config. Like, enable migration from OVS to ODL more easily. That should be a doable thing, he said. Right. So, 
So there are two questions. Uh, one is, um, uh, what about Oven? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, uh, but Flavio does. And the second is, uh, isn't having the entire ARP table uh, on each compute node a scaling issue? And I don't know the answer to that either. <laughs> okay, so Flavio says what, Ovi what Oven will do is roughly the same as what Open Daylight does, but it's just co-located with uh, OVS, so it's moving things a little bit closer to the edge. But Oven's an accelerated data plane. But Oven's an accelerated data plane. Um, I'm going to suggest that you take this conversation offline. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit weird repeating. <laughs> uh, yes? Uh, so uh, is uh, security groups actually supported in uh, ODL? Question, it, oh, I'm sorry, so you had the mic, so I don't have to repeat the question. Um, uh, I don't know. Are security groups supported in ODL? Are there plans to do that? There are plans to do that. But it's not supported right now. Okay. And then the north south uh, for the uh, not, I mean, north south routing, right? Like internal network to external network. Uh, for that, the natting is actually done using the uh, uh, using the OVS rules in the BREX or? Uh, so you know? the question is in north-south routing, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the mic. Um, I don't know, I, don't, I really, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's newer development. I'm uh, going to defer again to Flavio. Is the natting done in, uh, with the open, open vSwitch tables on each? It's with installed open <coughs> flow rules on, on, the, on the compute nodes. Okay, thanks. Yes, I'm going to take this question before I take you, and then that's, I think, going to be it. Um, you said the last slide said feature parity with Neutron. Uh -huh. uh, which Neutron, which release of the Neutron feature is that parity with? Okay, so the question is feature parity with Neutron, which version of Neutron? I'm deferring to my colleague who's. <coughs> Okay, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to that. And, and the security groups, so security groups are still supported on the instance, but what happens is that, so there is an issue with open vSwitch, um, uh, having IP tables applying to an open vSwitch instance. I don't know if that's been fixed or if there are plans to uh, enable that. <coughs> so you still need the Linux bridge there, uh, but I mean, that's created by uh, Neutron or Libvirt? I don't know. One of them. Hmm? With 2.4 and connection tracking, we might not need the Linux bridge. And then, last question, I'm afraid. Yeah, on the, uh, on the command to set the, uh, the controller as the manager, I think it was set manager. Yep. Um, that's a C uh, CLI command right now. Is there any plans to do, make it more dynamic? Like put in a configuration file, and if so, do you have any thoughts on which configuration? Like the ML2 plugin in it? Uh, I'm really not the best person to talk to about <laughs> that. Um, the question, uh, so are there plans to, I, that was one of, one of the questions I had is, is, is can I not just sort of yes. register a new compute node somewhere and have that automatically connect to the, to the controller? Um, Maybe that's part of the like the, the, the system management or whatever system management layer you're using to manage your, your open stack installer would, would take care of that. I don't know. Okay. okay. Um, thank you all. And uh, <laughs> enjoy the rest of the conference.